Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're studying on the 2020 paper. Okay, so the first question says uh, express 19.796 correct to two decimal places. So what you do, uh, if you're asked to do this, is to identify the, the critical place that they want. So it can be significant figure, it can be um, decimal places, it can be nearest one number. Okay, so for uh, decimal places, you just have to identify the the second decimal place. So the second decimal place is uh, this one right here. Okay, so it means the second place after the comma. So this one is first decimal place, second decimal place, and then you look at the third decimal place. You look at the uh, digit to the to the right, and then you analyze how this digit affects them. The the one that you just circled right now. So here six, it's greater than five. So we actually have to round up. And when we round up 9, it becomes uh, 10, so it becomes 0. Then you carry the 1 here, so it's actually uh, 8.80 here. And then you have to put the rest of the digits. So here the, the tricky thing was most students would think that 0 is insignificant for a case. So they would actually put 19.8. This, this one would be wrong, okay. So this one communicates one decimal place. If they say to correct two decimal places, they actually want to see two decimal places there. Okay, so you get this one is the answer. So B part says correct the same number two to one significant figure. So again, you have to uh, you have to identify the first significant figure. First significant figure is the first non-zero digit when you're reading the number. Okay, so you read this one is nineteen point. So the first significant figure would be this one here. Okay, and you have to correct for for uh, this nine uh, for for this one using this nine here so nine is greater than five so we actually have to round up so this one it's equal to it's equal to this one we round up so it becomes two twenty like this okay so this zero is insignificant so this one would be the one significant figure equivalent of the of the number that we had before the C part asks us to find the, the same number again to round it off to the nearest one number. So again, you have to write your your answer, your 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 number like this. You identify the the whole number place. So the whole number place is this one right here. Okay, and you are now asking yourself how does uh, this seven? How does it affect this nine? So again, it's this one is greater than greater than five. So you actually have to round up. So if you round up this one, it becomes ten. So it becomes zero. Then you carry the one here. Then you get twenty like this. Okay. So normally this connect this communicates one significant figure, but then it also communicates um, uh, nearest one number. Okay, so you'd actually get uh, twenty like this. So let's move to uh, the next question. Next question says find the exact value of zero point seven two minus this times this. So here you use um, you can use BOM. Does these are just the acronyms for it's it's a guideline to tell us what's the hierarchy of operation. So it means brackets come come first, and then you have orders. Orders is three powers. Then you have multiplication, division, then addition and subtraction. So we also have what's called um, board mass. It's the same as uh, this. Okay. So the only difference is uh, division comes first. So division and multiplication they are on the same level. So you can actually start by dividing, or you can just start by multiplying it to still be the same. Same as addition and subtraction, they are on the same level of our of operation. So here, what we're going to do is to to uh, get the the multiplication first. Okay. So to get the multiplication first, you get zero point seven two here, then minus zero point two times zero point seven. Here you just uh, say two by seven. Then you get fourteen. Okay. But then you're dealing with one two decimal places. So you actually have to adjust this to two decimal places. It be zero point. Uh, uh, it will be 0 0.14 as I wrote this one again. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.7 is equal to 0 0.14 like this. So you actually have to write 0 0.14 here. Then you have to do simple subtraction. So I'm going to use the space again. So it'd be 0 0.72 minus 0 0.14. When subtracting decimal fractions, when subtracting fractions, you just have to align the commas, and then uh, you sometimes you have to put this. You have to put placeholders for the decimal places. But then, for our case, 
everything was just uh, corresponding. So you had uh, the second decimal place in both of the of the both of our our numbers. Okay. So you say two minus four, then you can't. Then you can you can add ten here, so it becomes twelve. So twelve minus four, then you get eight. Then this one in the same operation, when you put this ten here, you actually have to put uh, two or one here as well. So it becomes two. So two uh, seven minus two, then you get five. Okay, so at the end of the day, you get 0 0.58. So you write 0 0.58 like this, okay. And then this one asks us to, to do, so this one will be your, your answer. Then this one asks us to do uh, the, the operation. This one uh, was divided by, okay. So you actually have to say this is equal to 6 divided by 0 0.08. When this one is a decimal, when the denominator, the number at the bottom here, of our fraction is a, deno is, a, is a decimal, we have to make it a whole number, okay? So it becomes more convenient that way. To make this one a whole number, we have to multiply by 100 so that our comma shifts to, to, the, uh, to, to this place here, so that it becomes eight, okay? But then if we multiply by 100 at the bottom, we actually have to multiply by 100 at the top. That's how we maintain the value of our number. So here, you actually get uh, 600, then divide it by eight like this, okay? So now you have to do the, the operation where you just do simple division here. So you can say eight into eight, one into 60. You get up to 56, so up to 56, it's seven. Then you're left with the remainder, remainder four, okay? So into 40, you actually get five. So you'd be getting 75 here. So this one will be your answer. And uh, on the B part, you have, you asked to find Three eighths of 2.2 kilometers and you asked to give your answer in in meters so normally what you do is when they say off then usually it indicates it's a buzzword it indicates multiplication okay so it'd be times 2.2 kilometers like this but then you want you want your answer in in meters so you can also add the um, if you want your answer in meters you can also add what's called the conversion factor the conversion factor is from from uh, uh, kilometers to, to meters. So the conversion factor meters to kilometers or kilometers to meters. So you can even say kilometers to meters. I'll show you, I'll show you how you manipulate. Uh, it's actually 1000 meters per, per kilometer. Okay, there are 1000 meters in every kilometer. So there are two ways to write this. It can be uh, 0 0.001 kilometer per meter, but then you need kilometer at the bottom so we actually have to write it like this okay in other words there are two conversion factors uh, for this case the other conversion factor this is what you have written but then the other conversion factor is from uh, kilometers to meters that one would be 0 0.001 like this kilometers per per meter but then if we insert this one here the kilometer doesn't cancel it actually becomes squared so that's what we want to avoid so we have to take this conversion factor uh, instead so this one would be by, by 1,000 uh, meters per kilometer. The reason we wrote the um, conversion factor before actually cancelling anything is that you see that we'll struggle with this 8 here. If we are to uh, simplify using 8, then we can uh, get maybe uh, 2 years, so it becomes 4. This one becomes 1.1. But then we are stuck, we actually have to say 3.3 uh, divided by 4. Then we calculate that, then we multiply by 1000. So it's uh, it's too much hassle. The way that you get around it is to introduce the conversion factor right now. Okay, so you actually introduce this conversion factor. Now see what will happen. You can say 4 into 8, then you get 2. Then you can say 4 into uh, 100. If you want, you can say 4 into 10. Then you get uh, 2. Remember what? Remember 2. Then you say 4 into 20. Then you get what? You get 5. Or you can just say 4 into 100, then you get 25 here. 4 into 0, then you get 0. So you actually get 250 like this. Then you can simplify this one. Then you get 1.1. Um, okay. Notice how the kilometers, they actually do cancel. Especially if you're doing physics, this is critical. Okay. You're actually observing how your units are changing. So here you get 3.3. Okay. So you get 3.3 multiplied by 250. So you have one decimal place here since it was 3.3. Uh, so this is how you, you simplify it, okay? So here you can say two, two place orders, then you get six, six here, okay? Then you say one place order, then you get 15 here. So you're going to leave five and you're going to carry the 10. So you're going to carry one, the one set, okay, one set of 10. 
then you say five times three, then you get 15 again, then plus one, you get 16. Like this, okay? Then you have to add these. What do you get? You get zero here, then here you get five, here you get 12. So you're going to, uh, you have two, and then you're going to carry one set of, of 10. So this one becomes eight at the end of the day, okay? So you have one decimal place, so you have to adjust for, for this at the end. So the answer that you get would be 825 like this. Okay, 825 meters, meters here remains. So that's just about it for this question. Uh, if you like our videos, please make sure you uh, show your like and also subscribe. Okay, it helps other people discover our channel. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. That's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next video. Yuba, out. Mm -hmm.